Hey, this is Nelson with New Pew Pew, and uh, I'm just gonna go over my uh, chest rig that I use for my Carolina, the, re the Carolina running gun. Um, you know, if, if it helps you out, that'd be great. But uh, you know, if you're shopping around or trying to figure out what kind of stuff to get, um, hope this helps out. Um, now you can just see my chest. I'm probably gonna lose my head on this video, but uh, here is, uh, you know, you, I sent uh, attached some links to on my blog as far as like where you know, what more the specs of this, the, the chest rig is. So I'm not going to go over the specs on this thing. I'm just going to go over just the basic features and just what I think of it. And uh, just a basic review of what, how it performed for me specifically for the running gun. So um, the, um, you know, overall the, this setup over here is cost about $93. So this is the chest rig itself, the base part, uh, the pistol holster and the magazine pouch, um, two of them, and also the hydration uh, pack. That's um, another attachment on there as well. So as you can see, it's um, it's one size fits all. And it's, uh, to give you a relative, I mean, some comparison as far as size is, I am, I wear a 41 regular jacket. So I'm not really very big in the chest. I've got an athletic build, so I'm fairly slim, uh, 33 waist and just the way this is cut, I mean, it, as you can see, it's already cinched up to as tight as I can get it. So it fits me pretty well. I'm about 5'11 and a half. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it holds up pretty well. I mean, it's, it's there. Um, I pretty much tightened up to where I can get to it. And I see there's still some space in between over here and there. And I can, you know, probably stick my hand through here as well. Um, but it's already cinched up. Now this is really, I'm sure, meant for uh, wearing a thicker top or thicker gear on top of it. Um, I think if, if that's for the case, then this would be fine. But for, you know, it wasn't really, I don't think, meant for summer racing, um, running gun. Um, I was wearing a, uh, a mud gear. If uh, you don't know about mud gear, you can Google the mud gear. And uh, it's a great stuff they wear. Um, I, I used to wear for um, race shirts, uh, which were made for mud running. And uh, you know, so it's, it wick away the, the sweat a lot better. They're pretty durable. Um, some they're some great stuff. So uh, when once reason why I wore that is so uh, when I'm running, you know, as you can see, this thing shifts quite a bit. Um, you know, just keep it from chafing you or you know, cotton. It's gonna hold the hold that water, hold that uh, sweat a little bit longer and it's it's gonna chafe you so that one had you know less chance of me getting chafed as well and uh it would just just breathe a lot better it just wicks away the sweat off your off your body uh and dries up a little bit faster than a regular cotton shirt would be um now the way the setup is i've got four uh magpul gen 2 magazines over here and i've got a uh four pistol mags and my pistol right here so this is um just to give you a relative um, a comparison to something that you may use, it's a P320, six hour, and this is the X5. Now, I also, I used a Canik TP9 SFX, um, so it's, it, you can see these Velcros, it's adjustable to what you need it for. So uh, this one, and as you can see, it's got the hook and loop, loop closures with a snap on there. So it's uh, really easy to get all that stuff and secure it snap it and hook and loop it and it's pretty secure it's not going anywhere um the only thing is like you know if you, if you have a red dot um there's no cutout over here to cover that or protect it so uh, that is the only thing so you pretty much only good for iron sights because um i was debating whether whether using a red dot um but uh you know what just just to keep it simple um especially during the course of a race where you're going crawling through mud um, and you don't have a hood on there and you know messing up your red dot or you know what once that's messed up then you know you're you're out a couple hundred bucks or you know it just you can't see a thing um, but you know you, you should have backup sights anyways but you know for these just going iron sights was probably the safest bet less chance of getting malfunctions and you should know how to use your iron sights anyways um, the other part was the the magazine holders here. Now these are, I don't know if you know the 320 X5s. They had uh, they already came with four 
magazines on there, 420 round magazines. So uh, it's um, for the money, it's pretty good as far as you know what you get for it. So uh, you got two up here, and for these two magazine holders, I use it for the pistol mags. So I've got a total of four uh, 20 round mags and four 30 round mags here. So um, I opted, now there's another version of the Condor um, which has all this combined all right together. So it has all the magazines, the six round magazines, uh, six magazine holders and um, all the uh, pistol mags right on top of it. Um, I decided not to use that version because this one was a little bit more flat. Uh, so in case I need to go on prone um, for any rifle shots or just for crawling uh, through the mud, it was just a lot flat, more flat for me just to crawl and not have to worry about this big bulky thing on my belly while I crawled. Um, also laid it up more to the side so I just have this little surface area to work with on here. Um, now the, uh, now as far as just why I decided to use a Condor chest rig was just based off my past experience. So um, uh, I used used to do a lot of trail running, do 50, some 50K runs. Um, and I was just used to wearing, wearing um, those race, uh, race vests with the hydration uh, bladders already hooked up in the, on the back, um, all my water bottles here or food or phone. So all that stuff was, um, all my gear was really up towards where I'm already used to it being. And I'm just used to carrying that weight on top of me as opposed to on the belt. So uh, that was probably the reason why I just chose the, the, the chest rig. Um, also, this was, you know, for 93 bucks, it's, it's not too bad just to have all the stuff that I have. And I'm not too worried about it just because, you know, uh, I could spend a little bit more, maybe I guess Safari Land um, holster, but you know, that's 300 bucks to two, 300 bucks. Um, but going through the mud, um, you know, I just needed something to hold my pistol, my firearm, make sure it's secure and, you know, not having to worry about it just flying out. So, um, if you don't want to spend any money, this is probably a good option, um, for you. Um, you can also get, I've seen a lot, a lot of the other guys, um, do some different combinations. They also used a, either used a plate, uh, carrier chest rig. Um, where they can get a horizontal version of the pistol and put it right here and all that You know the magazine holders attachments all over there as well So there are other different options you could do as well uh, some guys just use their competition belts um, Around their waist and just put all their magazines and all their pistols and all that stuff um, Some had battle belts which, which is a little bit more comfortable, but everything all the weight was on their waist it's whatever you have and use it and whatever works for you. So whatever you use, use it, uh, work with it, train with it. So at least you know how to, how it worked and how it's, um, um, works for you. And you know, just what's the weaknesses and the, the best parts of it. You know it already when you, before you use it. Now, um, like you know, some of these guys use these chest, um, uh, competition belts. Um, the big thing I was worried about was, I mean, I like my, my competition belt. Um, it's a comp, comp tack, um, holster, uh, blade tech, um, magazine holders. But, uh, the only thing was, I wasn't too sure how it's going to stand up for a six mile run, uh, through mud. Um, once you get all that stuff wet, how that's not, um, how well that's going to hold your gear. That was my big concern. And, you know, I'm just, just didn't like having, I guess probably just having the weight on my um, waist and have this thing just kind of just, um, you know, um, be bouncing around and um, did not have that extra secureness on there. So um, you could probably get all the other stuff, you know, the nicer holsters or with extra more retention on there. But like anything else, you know, in our sport of firearms, um, you know, if there's any way you can save some money, um, work with what you got, or if you want to spend or get more serious about it, sure. Um, spend on the nicer holster, uh, if you're going to take it more seriously. But, uh, you know, overall, this was, um, probably the least expensive that, I, that I thought would work for me. Um, nice part of, as well, it's, um, it's easy to break down if I need, you know, once this all mud is all muddy and just, you know, some nastiness on it. 
Just get some uh, Dawn soap, some brush, and scrub it down and wash it off and hose it off, and it's perfectly fine. So, uh, um, but um, overall, it's it worked pretty well for me. So the the only things, other things that were probably um, um, just from my experience was just the way it uh, shifts a little bit. So when you run, your body tightens up, and so the shifting will a little, get a little bit more um, more pronounced, or I guess just a little bit more um, sh shifting through the race. And you know, you just you may get some chafing on there um, through the course. So uh, one place was that really annoyed me was the the shoulder pads, since it was pretty. Once your rifle is on you, and that shifts this towards your neck. It was rubbing towards my neck, and you know, uh, you know, two first two miles is probably not too bad. Third or fourth, when you're sweat, you've got mud water on you. Um, you know, that's just gonna be rubbing on your neck. So instead of um, having to deal with that, I wore a neck buff, and so that kind of just helped it not rub on my neck uh, during the race, and also it kept my my neck cool as well, and not get burned from the sun. So uh, you know, wear a neck buff that helps you out keep you from being chafed. The other thing was uh, I wore a, a utility belt um, that was a pretty rigid just to hold uh, my dump pouch on there. And that belt was, as you can see, there's this little gap here between the rig and the belt. So there's that little fat, belly fat that you got there. Now this thing is like, once you start running, it's fine. But like by the end of the course of the race, this thing is all, this thing's gonna be pinching between you and your uh, rigid belt. And I started getting a bruise um, and um, some burn just because this thing was just rubbing between this this fat over here. So, uh, you know, some of the things that, you know, just having to deal with, uh, you know, figure that out beforehand, um, you know, try to put some, uh, um, Try to make some adjustments there for your next race. So um, I heard, I learned learned the hard way, and uh, hopefully you know you you try to figure that all that stuff out before your race, as opposed to like right afterwards. So um, I'm probably gonna use the same setup again, but uh, just make some adjustments as well as far as the uh, you know, just trying to figure out all the the hot spots again where all this stuff is. Um, I may not, depending on. The course of the race, you know, since it's in the summer, you know, the water bladder, it's, um, the race rules was that whatever you, uh, you know, the water, what, there was not going to be water, uh, water tables or, um, there were going to be water stations, you know, water stations were going to be out there. So whatever you bring out is what you, you, um, is what you have. So, uh, if you need to, if you're like me who are, you know, I, I sweat a lot, um, need to hydrate quite a bit. So you definitely need to um, get some hydration in you, some water, carry some, um, stay hydrated. You know, it's 90 degrees, uh, could be 100 degrees, who knows what the weather's gonna be like, and it's like it's nearly 90% 90, 90 humidity. So you're gonna be sweating tons and losing a lot of fluid. So it's nothing like, um, you know, bonking out during a race um, from dehydration. Um, so think about that as far as um, carrying fluids, you know, uh, you may not have to, don't have to fill it up all the way, but you may have fill up with something on there. And that is pretty much my setup. If you have any questions or comments, uh, send it and uh, I'll try to answer them for you. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a, for the first race, you know, I was pretty excited with it. Um, next one, um, looking forward to it. And, you know, just, uh, it's a learning curve trying to figure out what works for you. So, uh, um, We'll see how it goes and um, and go from there. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.